Here are 10 of the most insane places people have actually lived. Number 10. Meteora Monasteries, Greece The Meteora is a rock formation in Greece where you can find one of the largest and most dangerously built complexes of Eastern Orthodox monasteries. The name means lofty, elevated, and as you've probably guessed by now, the name is also related to the word meteor. In the 14th century, monks seeking a retreat from the expanding Turkish occupation found the inaccessible rock pillars of Meteora to be the ideal refuge spot. More than 20 monasteries were built, but only six remain standing today. The six monasteries are built on immense natural pillars and hill-like rounded boulders that dominate the local area, with some of them stretching up to more than a thousand feet in the sky. Since the access to the monasteries was deliberately made difficult, it required either long ladders lashed together or large nets to haul up both goods and people until the 17th century. This required quite a leap of faith because, legend has it, the ropes were replaced only, quote, when the Lord let them break. Yeah, doesn't sound that inviting to us. Number 9. The Paro Taksang Monastery, Bhutan the Paro Taksan is a popular Buddhist monastery located on the side of cliffs in the upper Paro Valley in Bhutan. The monastery hangs on a precarious cliff about 3,000 feet above the Paro Valley at an elevation of 10,240 feet. The rock slopes are very steep, stretching out almost vertically with the monastery built into the rock face. The temple complex was first built in 1692 around a cave where a guru supposedly meditated for three years, three months, three weeks, three days, and three hours back in the 8th century. The monastery consists of four main temples and caves, as well as residential buildings built solidly into the rock. Out of the eight caves, four are comparatively easy to access. All of the buildings are interconnected through steps and stairways carved into the rocks. There are a few rickety wooden bridges along the paths and a few stairways to cross over certain points. Each building has a balcony, which provides scenic views of the Paro Valley down below. Although it looks insane, it turns out that the monastery complex can be accessed fairly easily in several different ways. You can access it through a forest path, through a path used by religious devotees, or by passing over a rocky plateau called the Hundred Thousand Fairies. Hey, that doesn't sound too bad. Number 8. The Solvay Hut, Switzerland The Solvay Hut is located on the northeastern ridge of the Matterhorn near Zermatt in Switzerland. Located at a little over 13,000 feet, the Solvay Hut is the highest mountain hut owned by the Swiss Alpine Club, the largest mountaineering club in Switzerland. The hut is named after Ernest Solvay, who donated funds to build the hut back in August 1915 as gratitude for his time spent in the mountains. So, how was the Solvay hut built? All the building materials was brought up with the help of animals to the Hornley hut, which, by the way, is a bit over 10,500 feet. From there, a temporary cable car was used to transport the materials all the way up to the building site, and the actual hut was finished only within five days. The hut was rebuilt in 1966, and in 1976, an emergency telephone was finally installed. You'd think that would be one of the first things they would have put in, right? Mountain huts are intended to provide food and shelter to mountaineers, climbers, and hikers, and the Solvay hut isn't any different, as it's meant to be used in case of emergency. However, plenty of Matterhorn climbers have rested on the small ledge outside the hut, admiring the spectacular view of all the Monte Rosa summits. And of course, it's been used for emergencies. Number 7. Castel Forret de Raca, Spain The Castel Forret de Raca is a small town in Catalonia, Spain. One of the most scenic villages in Catalonia, Castel Forret de Raca, is dramatically perched atop a cliffside at the meeting point of two rivers. The basalt crag where the town is situated is over 160 feet high and almost half a mile long. The cliff was formed by the overlaying of, get this, two lava flows. 
Given its unique positioning, it's easy to see why the first inhabitants would have chosen to settle on this patch to stay safe from intruders. Dating back to the Middle Ages, the town is composed of a network of narrow roads and small squares, many of which are made using the volcanic rock found in the area. Anyone trying to invade wouldn't have had too much fun trying to do so. Curious to visit? Well, one of the nicest ways to soak up the views of Castelforet de Raca is by taking a hot air balloon ride. It'll let you see everything from the Mediterranean Sea to the Monsigny Mountains, as well as the stunning La Garrocha volcanic area's unusual landscape. Let us know if you've actually been. Number 6. The Korowai Tree Houses, New Guinea Deep within the inaccessible jungle of Papua New Guinea, about 93 miles inland from the Arafura Sea, lives the Korowai tribe, a tribe totally isolated from the rest of the world. They are hunter-gatherers living in a small society who need to share all they have in order to survive. Until their discovery by a Dutch missionary in 1974, the Korowai had hardly any contact with the outside world. The Korowai people live in treehouses ranging from 20 to 40 feet in height. But some of these treehouses rise as high as 114 feet above the ground. Most often, each house is built on a single tree. Sometimes the base of the house consists of several living trees, with an additional support delivered from wooden poles. In each treehouse, the flooring has to be strong, as each house often accommodates as many as a dozen people. A dry tree trunk with notches is hung from the bottom of the treehouse and acts as a ladder. The tree houses protect families not only from any unwanted visitors, but also against the swarm of mosquitoes below on the ground. These tree houses are essentially our dreams as eight-year-olds coming true. Number 5. Rochamadour, France Overlooking the Alzu Canyon, the medieval village of Rochamadour looks like it's perfected its balancing act. It's built almost vertically on the rocks, residing at an elevation of almost 1,200 feet the village has a scarce population of a mere 650 or so people. Built into a cliff that stretches 390 feet in length, the village clings high above the canyon, where the Alzu River flows through. Its houses, roofs, and churches look like they're part of the rock itself. Roshamadur has attracted visitors not only because of its setting, but also because of its historical monuments and the world-famous sanctuary of the Virgin Mary which for centuries has attracted pilgrims from many different countries. The town, which is the home of beautiful medieval buildings and churches, used to be traditionally dependent on pilgrimages coming to the area, but now it's mostly reliant on the tourist trade. Number 4. Ronda, Spain Ronda is a town in the Spanish province of Malaga. It's located about 62 miles west of the city of Malaga, and has a population of about 35,000 inhabitants. Ronda is situated in a mountainous area about 2,460 feet above sea level, the reason the town has spectacular views. The Guadalivine River runs through the city, dividing it into two and carving out the steep, 300 feet deep El Tajo Canyon, above which the city perches. The main attractions in the town are the three bridges, Puente Romano, or the Roman Bridge, Puente Vejo, or the Old Bridge, and Puente Nuevo, the New Bridge, are the most impressive features of the city. The Puente Nuevo is the tallest of the bridges, towering 390 feet above the canyon floor. All three of the bridges span the canyon, and all three attract thousands of visitors each year. Both Ernest Hemingway and Orson Welles have spent many summers in Ronda as part-time residents. Both wrote about Ronda's beauty and famous bullfighting traditions, which is why Ronda is still popular to this day. Number 3. Al Hajara, Yemen Al Hajara is a village in Yemen built upon a precipice. Built at an elevation of 6,096 feet, it has a population of 2,500, and it's most famous for its towering houses that are built directly onto the cliff faces. The village in the Haraz Mountains seems ancient and yet weirdly modern at the same time. To some people, the taller of the brown, flat-roofed houses, precariously balanced on the top of the mountain, pretty much look like skyscrapers. What do you guys think? In Yemen, great pride is taken in building a house, 
and once the house is finished, it's often decorated with calligraphy. Windows are often the most decorative element, with palm tree drawings, dots, zigzag lines or floral designs. The town's remoteness and narrow streets formed close-knit communities that in times of invasion may have allowed the occasional outsider to enter but not necessarily to leave. al hajra is a former market town that nowadays is used as a base camp by trekkers. Interestingly though, the small village is also known for its production of black pepper. Number 2. The Hanging Temple, China Have you guys ever thought of living literally on the side of a cliff? Of course not, it's because you're not insane. However, for some reason, the Hanging Temple is a temple that was built into a cliff 246 feet above the ground in the Shanxi province of China. According to the legend, construction of the temple began at the end of the Northern Wei Dynasty by only a single man, a monk named Lao Ran. Over the next 1400 years, many repairs and extensions led to its present-day look. The monastery is located in a small canyon basin, with the body of the building hanging from the middle of the cliff under the summit. The structure of the temple is kept in place with oak crossbeams fitted into the holes chiseled into the cliffs. The entire 40 halls and pavilions are all built on the cliffs, with the main supportive structure hidden inside the bedrock. Built more than 1500 years ago, the temple is known not only for its ridiculous location, but also because it's the only existing temple that combines the three Chinese traditional religions, Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. But really though, living here is a test of faith in the structure. Number 1. Bonifacio, France Who doesn't like an entire city built on a cliff? Perched 230 feet high up on a white limestone cliff on the southern coast of Corsica lies the medieval town of Bonifacio. Known as the Mediterranean Sentinel or simply the Citadel of Cliffs, it's arguably one of the best kept secrets in France. Founded at around 830 AD, Bonifacio is Corsica's oldest town. Bonifacio is built on the southern coast of Corsica, separated by the Italian island of Sardinia by the six mile long Strait of Bonifacio, which is named after the town. The two islands were once joined, but volcanic activity tore them apart, leaving huge shards of granite rock in the turquoise waters. The cliffs have been undercut by the ocean so that the buildings, which have been placed on the very lip of the precipice, appear to be hanging over the cliffs. Many of the town's main gems lie beneath the surface, but you have to work hard to reach them. For example, the staircase of the King of Aragon features 187 steep steps carved into the flanks of the cliff that descend into the sea. With an incline of 45 degrees, a little bit of dizziness and painful thighs are almost guaranteed. Here's what's next. Geologist on edge. Secondly, the level of crime in Lima is considered to be very high. Numbia, which uses several metrics to measure crime in cities around the world, rates Lima at an 82.14. This puts it on the higher end of the spectrum, almost the highest actually, because the scale goes from zero to 100. Zero being no 